What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out how to create and export a rendering using the new workspace of Twinmotion. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in order to use the version that has the new user interface, you need to go into the Epic Games Launcher and under the Twinmotion tab, you wanna make sure that you've downloaded 2023.1 Preview 2. So um, anything before that is going to have the old um, user interface, so it's gonna look different than this. But then once you're done, you can click on Launch. And so when you click on Launch, what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up a window that looks something like this. Um, this is where the templates sit. And um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this work table template right here. So I'm gonna click on open. You may have to download it first, but then we can take a look at that inside of Twinmotion. Okay, and so you've probably noticed that this looks a little bit different um, than it did before. And so specifically what I wanted to talk about, because there's a lot of things that we can um, discuss in here, but specifically what I'm gonna talk about today is how you can use this new user interface in order to export a rendering. So say that we wanted to come in here, we wanted to export maybe like this view of our rendered scene right here. So um, remember that in the previous version of Twinmotion, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to hide this navigation panel because I don't really need it right now. In the previous version of Twinmotion, all of your options were in this kind of like big clunky window at the bottom of the page, right? Um, they've changed this um, but the way that things work in general is very similar. And so what we wanna do is the same as we had to before, we wanna go into media mode. And so when we go into media mode, that's going to be the mode where we're gonna set up our different scenes or our different views. And so notice how if I click between these, like this, notice how different kinds of lights are being toggled on. These are all just pre-made scenes with different sets of lighting in here. And so let's say that we wanted to create our own what we would do is we would come over here and we would click on the plus button. And so when we click on the plus button, that's gonna create our own image in here. And so what we can do is we can make changes to this. So let's say I wanted to fly in like this, maybe get kind of like this view right here. And then I can click on this little refresh button in order to update the image to match what's in my viewport. So notice how if I click back and forth, this is going to toggle between this image and this image. And this has our camera information, our lighting information, other things like that built into it. Okay, and so remember how before when we had something like this, we needed to like pop up a little menu at the bottom of the page. That's no longer the case because all of our visual stuff having to do with our image, like our lighting, our weather, other things like that, they all live in a bar on the right-hand side of the page now. And so what that means is that means that we can come in here and we can make adjustments. And so we can access most of those settings by clicking on the ambiance option right here. If I click on the ambiance right here, I'm going to be able to start making changes. So for example, notice how um, if we were using this HDRI environment, we could make changes to the direction of this HDRI environment. So I can change that. Well, those changes um, are going to be reflected in my scene. So let's say I brought this down a little bit. Notice how that's being adjusted inside of this scene and you can see the preview adjusting. So we could turn like the intensity up. So notice how when I do that, it's coming in here and it's automatically adjusting the scene with that new intensity. So we could also do things like adjusting our camera focal length so we could come in here and we could adjust our depth of field, we could adjust our camera effects. So if we wanted like vignette around the outside, maybe some lens flare, um, which we're not gonna get a ton of with this lighting, um, but all of those things are now going to be in here for you to adjust. So see how you can adjust things like your contrast and your saturation of your colors using these sliders as well. All of those things are going to live inside of this particular image. And so notice how they're different for each scene, um, meaning that I can go back in and I can adjust them individually. Now, note that you can also, under the image settings, set how large your image is going to be when it's exported. So for example, notice how I could set this to be like a 4K image if I wanted this to be a 4K image. So I could click in here, I'm in order to set this to be 4K, and this is gonna adjust the width and the height. The other thing that we could do is if we wanted to, we could set if this is going to be a real-time image or a path traced image. Notice how if I click in here under path trace, then this is now using the path tracer in order to light the image rather than the real-time. And notice how that's also indicated on this tab right here. And so let's say for example that we wanted two of these, we could come in here and just click on the button for duplicate. Well, on the second one, I could say that this one's gonna be the real time. So this one's gonna be the path trace, this one's gonna be the real time render right here. But now 
I've got these images all set up and ready to export. So now let's say that I wanted to export this. We're just gonna do the same thing that we did previously with the old version. We would just click on the export button and that's going to allow us to export an image. In this situation, we're gonna click on image right here and we're going to click on the plus button. And so when we click on the plus button, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to come in here and that's going to um, let us select different images. So let's say for example that I wanted to export this image right here, and I could also export maybe this image right here. And I'll do this one as well. So this would now export three images. But once you're done with that, you can click off of this and notice how you get a three in here, indicating that it's ready to export three images. And so when you're done with that, what you can do is you can just scroll down and click on the button for start export. And then you select a location, and then you click on done, and that's going to export your images. So we're gonna let this work and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at the results. All right, so now if we look in this folder, we can see these three different images. Um, and so if I open this up, and so if I open this up, I can take a look at them and see that they've all been kind of rendered out. Um, note that this one right here that I exported is much larger because I exported it to 4K. So notice how that one is a significantly larger file size in here, but it's also going to have higher resolution than the other images as well. And so just real quick, if you did want to create and export an animation, you would do this in kind of the same place. And so same thing where you set the resolution of the video right here. So in the media window, if you click on video, this will take you back to all your videos. But if you click on any of these, um, then what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to pop up the little window where you can set the size of the image that you wanna create over on the right-hand side of the page. But then you would just click on export. You would make sure that you've selected the video you wanna export. And then you just click on the start export button and select a folder and that's going to export this. And the amount of time this is gonna take is really going to depend on if you have this set on real time, if you have it set on path traced, um, as well as the number of frames that are in your video. Okay, so that's from in this video. I am currently updating my Twin Motion Essentials course to match the new user interface. But if you do want to get in there and start learning the basics of using Twin Motion, this could be a great time to do that. I will link to that on this page. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.